Hello, welcome to Theatre Reviews with Paul Seven. I'm here at the National Theatre to see Dear England. You might think if you're seeing a play about the manager of the England men's football team, you need to know about football. You don't. There's hardly a football in sight. Dear England is the story of a clash of cultures uh, rather than the battle between teams on the pitch. In particular, it tells the story of how a self-effacing nice guy tries to change the culture of a macho group that is paralysed by fear of losing. In the process, it gives us a lot of comedy, as well as some thoughts about the state of the nation. Keep watching and I'll tell you more about James Graham's Dear England at the National Theatre and how Joseph Fiennes hits the back of the net as Gareth Southgate. And I promise that's the only football cliche I'll use. Oh, and please comment, like and subscribe to this channel. Now, I know next to nothing about football, and actually, that helped when I saw Dear England, because I was probably more excited for not knowing the outcome of some of the matches than if I'd known what was going to happen. But the thing is, it's not really about the results. I think we all know England didn't win the World Cup last year, or even the Euros the year before, or it would have been all over the front pages. And one thing we do know is how important England, the football team, is to a significant part of England, the nation. And James Graham has built Dear England around the idea that the team is a microcosm of the country. One other football event we probably know about is the infamous missed penalty, the one taken by Gareth Southgate back in 1996 that meant England lost to Germany in a Euros semi-final. It's a failure that hangs over him throughout this play because for some reason it's come to symbolise the moment when everybody realised there was something rotten at the core of the England team. And that's where we begin. Rupert Gould's production takes place sandwiched between the glare of two harsh neon circles, one above and another at stage level, recreating the feel of a stadium, but also emphasising the pressure on the players of being in the middle of a pitch and indicating the magnifying glass focus of a nation's expectations. On the stage floor are a mass of dotted lines and arrows of the kind that show attacking manoeuvres. Uh, and on stage are cubicles through which people enter and exit, symbolising perhaps the changes that take place in cubicles, but also, in a practical way, cutting down the immense distance from the actual wings where actors appear and disappear. It's an imaginative and effective use of the Olivier's large thrust stage uh, by designer Es Devlin and lighting designer John Clark. There's a quick run-through of a succession of England managers who, in amusing cameo impressions, have plenty to say about their management style and why it's not their fault they failed. Until eventually, Gareth Southgate takes over and, in his reticent way, asks why, with some of the world's best players, they're not a winning team. He concludes, it's all in the mind. So he calls in the psychologist, Pippa Grange, played by Gina McKee, and this is where the fun begins. Well, actually, it's already begun when Mr Southgate, call me Gareth, first meets his coaching team. Played by Joseph Fiennes, this is not simply an impressionist's turn, although I'm guessing that his mannerisms, the looking down, the pointing when he agrees with somebody, the precise use of language, the slightly nasal tone, the nervous grin, are all reasonably accurate representations of the uh, superficial uh, part of Gareth Southgate. But what we get is a rounded character who admits he doesn't know everything, who listens, who isn't confrontational, who doesn't shout. Uh, even I've heard of uh, another famous manager's hairdryer treatment. But who ultimately has a steel resolve. And we see that when he lets players go, or when he stands up to racism, or when he meets Mike, the assistant he's inherited. I think this is a made-up character, but Mike represents the antithesis of Gareth. He's a blustering man's man who has no time for losers, nor for psychology and woke thinking. Played hilariously by Paul Thornley, he's red-faced and always on the brink of boiling over. Gareth lets Mike have his rant and then ignores him. I mean, I think we must assume that Mike and the new senior assistant coach, Steve Holland, brought in by Gareth, continue to support the schooling of the players in physical training and tactics elsewhere, uh, while the work on their minds takes place in front of us. I mean, I think I saw, only saw one football for the whole length of the play, and <laughs> probably just as well, because 
We are talking about actors. I mean, they're physically fit and go through some balletic movements, thanks to movement directors Ellen Kane and Hannes uh, Langhoff. But they wouldn't have convinced us professional footballers if they'd tried to kick a ball. In fact, a feature of Rupert Gould's uh, production is constant feverish movement, uh, heightened by the regularly turning stage. Together, Gareth and Pippa work on moving the team away from a fear of failure to embracing and learning from it, away from being individuals whose loyalty is to their club to a team who know and support one another, and away from people who bottle up their feelings to ones who are open about their emotions. And there is immense enjoyment in seeing the players gradually change from resistance to embracing the new approach, as well as embracing each other. Apart from Gareth Southgate, and to an extent Pippa Grange, all the other characters are caricatures. It's James Graham's style in his many plays and TV dramas based on real people to create the truth of a person's character through humour, uh, rather than a nasty or saintly portrait. You may remember his Brexit the Uncivil War, or Tammy Faye, Ink, Best of Enemies, Quiz, or This House. In this play, James Graham can't resist introducing our recent Prime Ministers, all trying and failing to score. I can't say how accurate the portrayals of the players are, but I did end up feeling for them. England captain Harry Kane, as portrayed by Will Close, is barely articulate at first, but is seen to inspire the others through his lack of ego and a simple confidence in his ability. Josh Barra's goalkeeper, Jordan Pickford, is gloriously hyperactive. Dara Hand's Marcus Rashford stands out as a young man from a deprived background with a bit of a chip on his shoulder who's inspired to become an enthusiastic leader. Adam Hoggill is the solid defender and plain-speaking Yorkshireman Harry Maguire. It's such a good cast that it's hard not to mention everybody. But maybe I should pick out Gunnar Cawthry, who gives us terrific impressions of a wise-cracking Gary Lineker, a cool Sven-Goran Eriksson, a blustering Boris Johnson and a sanguine Wayne Rooney. And Crystal Condy, who does the same for ex-footballer and now commentator Alex Scott and Theresa May. I haven't said enough about Gina McKee, whose twinkling eyes and turned-up corners of the mouth are like the smile of a tiger, and whose soft northern vowels sugarcoat a hard centre. She made the most of a part that seemed to me slightly superficial, but this may be because Mr Graham didn't want to distract too much from his main character. Now, the idea of someone coming to a football club and creating a successful team by getting them in touch with their feelings and believing in themselves may make you think of Ted Lasso. Both shows clearly touch the zeitgeist of the 21st century. But, unlike the Apple TV hit comedy, Dear England explores some big issues. At the beginning, the expectations the nation has of its team reflect uh, the nation's view of itself. The fans are steeped in a history of England as the birthplace of football, as the winners of the 1966 World Cup, as the home of the finest league football. The team should have success on the world stage by right, they think. And if it doesn't, the frustration leads to riots. And although it's not so explicitly stated, I'd be surprised if Mr Graham doesn't intend a parallel with England the country, which historically once ruled half the world, invented so many things, and won World War II, leading many of its people, at least an older generation, to expect that the country should by rights be a successful world power. Believe in people, care about people, be kind, is Gareth Southgate's message to England's new generation of players. But it's also a vision of the kind of nation England is in the new century, or at least can be. I was caught up in this journey and moved by its outcome. I give Dear England five stars. I hope you found this review uh, interesting and useful. If you did, please like, comment and, of course, subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know about my future reviews. You can read my reviews at theatre.reviews and you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Thank you for watching.